What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And you are tuned in to another episode of Poor Minds. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what it is. You're not going to do the bar? Where a drunk mind speaks sober thoughts? Why are you switching it up today? Where a drunk mind speaks sober thoughts, Buki. What's up? What's up with you today? You look really nice. <laughs> you do. You know what? First of all, I really didn't. I just got on a little concealer, a little Me one too. two. I just couldn't do it today. I couldn't do a full face of makeup either. Yeah. I got on a little concealer. Mm-hmm. I did a little quick little brow. The skin is skinning, huh? Thank you. Looks good on Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yeah, obviously Thank it's a well. solo episode. I know y'all been waiting for this, and let me just give y'all a warning right now. We already been drinking a little bit, so if things get a little out of hand, just you know, bear with us. I'm not I'm not going to hold you. I've been drunk for like the past two weeks. <laughs> what is going on? Is everything okay at home? <laughs> Facts. But you know, it was my birthday. Yeah, like you had a lot going on. You had a lot Then going I on. went out of town. Mm-hmm. Thugging with your round. My pussy pink. That booty hole brown. I can't concur. <laughs> you can confirm, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> it is indeed. Okay. Uh, a little button. It's a little... What we used to we say? Are, chocolate starfish. It is a chocolate starfish. It is. Yeah. Um, so other than that, what you been up to, girl? I've been thugging with my rounds. Yeah, yeah. Too many bitches. What a nigga nigga's that? that? I've been getting my coochie scratched. <laughs> oh, y'all. <laughs> this coochie has been getting scratched, girl. In a good way. What would be a bad way? You know, because I don't want them to think like, rare scratch. Like, you know, I'm trying to get my coochie scratch. Hey. Y'all, I was just had, like, life has just been grand. Life has been grand. Um, therapy has been just going so well for me. I've been using it, like, literally taking action. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like it's shown, you know, in my dating life, in mm-hmm. my, um, my friendships, mm-hmm. like, um, my job. Everything is just, mm-hmm. you know, it's going real well you for me. You ain't got no job, Tommy. Yes, I do got a job. I'm doing it right now. This is work. We are at work. <laughs> We are at work. Okay. You know what I'm saying? It's work. It's work. So I just feel like, you know, life has been good for me. I've turned a new leaf. Mm-hmm. God damn it. And, uh, yeah, I've been getting my coochie scratched. <laughs> what a nigga is that? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been getting my coochie scratched, too. I'm going to me. your coochie scratch. Oh. Exactly. Don't be trying to act like... Oh, remember we used to moan for no reason? Oh, my God. Why do you bring up the most random shit? Because when I said, uh, I don't know why I said it like First that. First of all, but... we? <laughs> bitch, this ain't French, nigga. What do you mean we used to moan? No, I said you. No, you used to moan. No, I did yes, not. Did. For no reason. <laughs> no, I did yes, it, Lex. Did. I was I little... Was Lex, I, was like, I have... Lex, I literally have videos of you, and I swear to God, I put this on my daddy. I will send one of them hoes to Javier so he can insert it. <laughs> so he can insert it right here in the episode because I used to be talking, and you would just be like, Ugh. <laughs> I was doing that because I was mocking you. Because that's how you would wake up in the morning. You'd be like, Ugh. I want to go to Bitch, brunch. I do not wake up like that. Y'all want to go to brunch? Oh, oh my God. I be lies. like, you're horny. You just talk like that, though. But that's why I say a lot I, of times. I feel like I do, like, moan naturally. I We talked about this before, and when I started doing but the I moan. But I don't be doing that. Yes, you do. You be like, hi. Oh, I'm great. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, you do. You're a liar. I'm not lying. It's the truth. The facts are the facts, hon. Mm-mm. It is what I don't it like is. It. But um, but yeah, so if you want to send Javier a video, do what you gotta do. I'm but a just, Cindy. But just and know. I want him to insert it right there because you literally just lied and said you didn't. I like was doing do it because I was imitating you. Points were made, hon. Mm-hmm. That's where it came from. Okay, okay. Exactly. Mm. Now, you ready to get into these motherfucking topics? I'm ready. We are supposed to be professional. This is why people like the solo episodes. Because we be cutting up. We do. And we ain't even drunk. That's the crazy part. We only took one shot. Well, I haven't ate today. I haven't ate today either. I 
but let's before we get into these, because I'm gonna sip this drink and drink. Mm -hmm. Ta, our girl Ta, yes. cutting up. What are we drinking today, Queen? That today. mic was close. Mm. <laughs> today we are drinking the LS Express. Okay, so mm. I know. Kenny Burns was on here recently, and he introduced us to the LS Cream Liqueur. Mm -hmm. So we made an espresso martini featuring that. So we also are featuring a black-owned brand, that Vusa is African as well. Hmm. So this is what you're drinking, Lex. This is the vodka that we chose for the day. Thank so we you. have that. We have some Kahlua, which is a coffee liqueur. We have mm -hmm. that LS Cream Liqueur, and then we have some cold brew. So that's gonna make it a, a espresso martini, but the LS Liqueur, that's giving it that creaminess mm -hmm. that you taste. Yep. And I like it real creamy, Pookie. <laughs> mm. And then we've garnished it with three espresso beans. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> No, this drink is tasty. It is tasty. Please let Ty finish what she was saying. Please, Ty, continue. Sorry. That's that's it. You look great today, by the way. You I do love look your outfit. beautiful. Yeah. The braids is bright in. Yeah. And wait, what is, does Drea have the same thing in her drink too? Drea has the same thing except she has hers with the Reposado tequila. Okay, gotcha. So that's you. giving in tying in some of those caramel notes and stuff too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cold, cold, Tasty. Cold. It's good, oh. baby. It's delicious. I'm gonna call mine the cream Man, donut. Oh, that's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. I'm cutting up, huh? The creamy starfish. Ooh, oh, wee. A creamy star. I like that. That sounds like a move that I need to do on my man. Ew. Mm. To get into the topic. Okay, okay, go ahead. Introduce the first topic, Drea. Come on now. But the first topic, I want to talk about the importance of having a diverse group of friends. Yes. I, I feel like my friend group ain't diverse. It need to be, though. I think your friend group is diverse, though. Oh. No. Because we are literally all different. Now, when you say diverse, are you meaning, like, actual, like, ethnicity and stuff, or like race, or are you meaning like personalities, things that they do? Because I feel like- I think all of the above. I feel like my friends, yep, everybody do something different, but I think we all the same person. Mm, mm, mm. I think so. Like, when like I think about group, Jordan and Jasmine- Yeah, a group, like y'all all funny, but I, when I think about like Jordan and Jasmine, they're so opposite. Like, to me, that's so- You think different. Jordan is opposite from Jasmine? I do, I do. In what way? I just feel like they're opposite. I don't know. Like, the time I hung out with Jazz and the time I've hung out with Jordan, they're just different to me. You don't mm -hmm. think you're the same tribe? Same tribe. Okay. Yes. So, for me, I feel like I'm more interested in having a diverse group of friends because I like having people who do different things and have different opinions um, from how they live their lives. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because I feel like sometimes being that you know, I've only been working for what? I haven't been working for what, two years? I've been, yeah. you know, an entrepreneur. So I'm not gonna lie to y'all. A what? A boss. A girl boss. You gotta say it like that. I'm a boss, You gotta say it like that, though. B. You gotta B. say it like B A W S E. A boss. A boss. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It made me, I was saying a boss too hard. It was making me think of my man. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> So when I think about oh, like having a diverse group of friends, because like I said, I haven't been working for two years and I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I'm gonna be 100% put my guard down and be honest. Sometimes it's hard not to get, um, sometimes it's hard like to stay connected to like what's really going on. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like- In this space that you're in now? Yeah, like I feel like sometimes not that I lose touch, because I'm not that far gone where I'm, like, making millions of dollars. But, you know, my schedule, you know, I really... That's not what you told Kenny Burns last week. What? What I told Kenny Burns? <laughs> what? You said this is a multi-million dollar company. It is. I didn't say we pay ourselves out. I said it will be, bitch. I was over here like, who company? No, I said it will be, because that's what we're speaking into. I hope I didn't say that. Because, baby, I still, I got $4 now. Hold on, bitch. But anyways, 
I feel like sometimes um, I can get a little disconnected just because, not because of the money, that's not what I'm talking about, just as far as like my schedule. Like, mm -hmm. I literally get to wake up and choose what I do every day. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have that freedom to live my life like I want to. So sometimes I'll be like hitting my friends up and I want to just jump up and go do something and they can't do it and I get a little, you know? So I think it's important to like have people in your friendship that like keep you grounded. Like, you need the friend that you go out with and turn up with. You need the friend that you go to for advice. So when I think of diverse, that's what I think of because I can't have everybody around me. We all got the same mind frame. We all do the same thing because you need people who have different opinions around you or mm -hmm. you're going to surround yourself with a bunch of yes men who are going to be giving you shitty advice. So I feel like when I think of diverse, I think of like everybody who's walking different walks of life. We were all raised different. Like all my friends were raised completely different from me. So I think of my friend group as being diverse. I mean, especially because my best friend of 25 years, you know, Lindsay, shout out to Lindsay, that's still my friend. Like, I still talk to her. We're still really close. So if I need a little, you know, what's it called when you got to hire somebody? Uh, Assistant? No, what's it called? Affirm affirm affirmative action? That's my little affirmative action. Lindsay, my affirmative action. You know, mix it up a little bit. That's my diversity. Right. Sprinkle a little bit on top. Anyways, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so are you are you one of those people who feel like every friend doesn't serve every purpose? Like you gotta have different friends for different things. Absolutely. Because I remember this girl that I know, shout out to Jasmine. Her name Jasmine Milan on Instagram, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, she has a podcast now. Mm -hmm. And she was saying, and it went viral on like a clip, she was saying how like she don't use her friends for everything. Like she has different friends that she use specifically for different tasks. Or if she might need information from this person, she gonna call this person. She might, might want to go out to the club. This the fun girl. She gonna yeah. call this person. And so people was going in on her in the comments because they were just basically saying that if you don't want to be, if you don't feel like I'm for everything, I'm useful for everything, don't be friends with me. You can't categorize me and put me in certain categories and not call me for everything. If you don't feel like I'm a multi-purpose friend, then don't even be my friend. And, and I thought that was a really good, I thought that was a really good point. If I get in a relationship right now, why would I call you and ask you for relationship advice? If I'm talking about Thanks. a business, if I need business advice why, on how to start a business, why would I call my friend who's never started a business? People take things so personal, and you got to realize it's not saying that you're a bad person. It's just saying you have your strengths and you have your weaknesses. Your weaknesses. We are all like that. Mm -hmm. I'm not strong at everything. It's sometimes people will ask me stuff. I'll be like, hey, this is how I feel, but I'm going to let you know. I'm not don't really take my advice. Right. But it's some stuff I can really speak on and I can get down and nitty gritty with you. You know, mm -hmm. you ask me how to suck a little dick, I'm going to show you, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Don't it's, remind me. Okay, because I can show you again now. So, like I was saying, I, <laughs> I feel like people take things so personal. I was going to say, though, I think that that's a great point. Mm -hmm. I think that you do need people for different things. Yeah. Everybody, you can't use everybody for the same thing. And you know what's going to happen? The same people that's talking about, oh, like don't... Like, for example, with you, whenever I need to have a serious moment, I'm never going to call you. You know what? Killer told me that, too, and that hurts. Because... <laughs> it, I mean, facts. You don't take nothing serious. Nothing. Ever. But... You are the most unserious person <laughs> I've ever met in my life. And if I need to really be serious, I can't call you because, bitch, in this moment, I want to be mad as fuck. I want to throw shit. I want to cry. And you're going to make me laugh. You're going to take me out of character. <laughs> but the thing is, sometimes you need to just laugh at things. And that's okay, too. Well, I will say, I'm an advocate. I feel like we laugh at everything. You supposed to. We laugh at everything. I feel like I'm like that anyways, though, because yeah. I'm goofy. Yeah, you got to laugh sometimes. I'm so goofy. <laughs> We hate when bitches say that. <laughs> but no, I do feel like um, 
You do have, like, certain friends for certain things, but th that's what I'm saying. Like, take yourself out of it and stop taking things so personal. Like, yeah. and I get that, because me and Killer had a conversation. She was like, Bro. Have you always felt that way, though, or do you feel like that's something that, like, you've evolved to be that person well, as you've gotten older? Well, let me say this. That's what I was going to say earlier. Um... Friends will say this, oh, don't put me in the category. I want to be that friend for everything. But then when you put them in that category of everything, they want to say, oh, you're asking me of too much. I'm burnt out. You're not supposed to have one person to be your everything. Mm -hmm. You know, you need your man for this. You need your friend for this. You need friend too for this. Like, you have to spread it out. To put all that pressure on one person is just too much. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And y'all, look, it's getting warm outside, so it's time to get them bodies right. I'm just saying, like, who want to be in the kitchen all day? I like something quick and easy, because mm -hmm. I just be trying to be full okay. so I can go drink some more. Hello. So, 15 minutes or less is yeah. how quick you can have these meals prepared. And they got snacks. And they got desserts, everything you looking for. Yes, I feel like if you just want to get in the kitchen, pre-portion meals, like she said, it's super quick, super easy. And it's summertime, so I know y'all having pool parties, barbecues. So if you need appetizers, snacks, sides, whatever you need to host your party, you're going to get all of that from HelloFresh. Like she said, it's all pre-portioned, pre-packaged, all that good stuff. Right. So go to HelloFresh.com slash PoorMind16. That's HelloFresh.com slash PoorMind16 for 16 free meals plus free shipping. Period. You heard me. What friend am I? You are the friend. <laughs> That I call, like, you and Lauren, I definitely call with my man problems. <laughs> like, I told myself, I'm on my... But why? I don't be having a man. No, like, when I say... Because <laughs> I don't either, bitch. Duh, the fuck? That's why. Because, no, I feel like sometimes when I need to go it's hard... It's like the blind leading the blind is what he sounds no, like No, but I feel me. like when I need to go, like, hard on a nigga... Because, you know, like, I'm a oh, saucy. Okay. Like, when I need to go yeah. hard on a nigga, I call you and Lauren. I am hard on a hoe. Yeah, so, like, I call y'all when I need to be hard on somebody. Like, when I want to talk about, like, business stuff and my goals, I talk to you and I talk to Killer. Mm. Like, when I'm ready just to, like, be like, oh, my God, I'm in love with this nigga. He love me down. Like, I, mm, I, I talk to Killer about that. Mm. You know, like... I, Y'all like the same person. Yeah, she is. Me and Killer are literally the same person. Yeah. So I feel like when I want to talk about lovey dovey stuff or like being in my feelings, I think I remember the last time I called you crying about a nigga. You was like, All right, is everything okay? <laughs> <laughs> you were like, So what you mad at again? <laughs> I was like, Bitch, my nigga. And you were like, Oh, well, you know. <laughs> Fuck that nigga. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? So I was like, okay, bitch, this is the last this time I called. This is not the bitch I called for this. <laughs> when no, I remember when we got... Support? No, this is what I'm talking about. You remember when somebody sent me flowers and I didn't know which nigga it was? Oh, yeah. And he was like... Well, oh, this... and I had to block... Was that the time I had to block you? Or did you block me? No, I didn't block you. I've never blocked you. You did block me I before. have never blocked you. Yes, you did. Because I text you and it did not say my delivered. cream donut. And your phone never did. You one person. I literally was... Are you kidding me? My phone is always your dead. Phone, well, not for me. Maybe just not when I call. Mm. I saw Lee the other day. If I ever had to call somebody and bank on the fact that they gonna <laughs> answer the phone, it's gonna be legs. Like, if somebody had a gun to my head, it was like, if you don't answer the phone, I'm gonna pop you. I will call you, because yeah, you gonna answer. answer. Yeah, I'm Lynn, I'm gonna die. You? Nigga, I done been to hell three times already. What? Because you don't ever answer the phone. Yes, I do. No, you don't. I do. But anyways, what was he saying before that? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into the second part. Okay, okay. Okay, so wait. So pause. When we talk about diversity of friends, Oh, though, yeah, that's what we were talking about. And you were saying, I asked you, I was like, oh, oh about like, the what friend am I? Like, yeah, what, what friend? So I'll say yeah. this. Let me tell the story because I had got some flowers sent to me. Okay. Yeah. I was dealing, you know, I was dealing with two men at the time, you know, just casually dating, and I didn't know which one sent it to me. And I wanted to ask because low key, I wanted to ask both of them because I wanted the other one. You didn't send me flowers. I wanted to low key make him mad. Dre wasn't giving me the pettiness I needed her to give. She was like, "Well, girl, just wait. One of them gonna say something, and you gonna know." I was like, "Ah, bye, 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 bitch, bye," and I hung up. I wasn't, you wasn't giving petty. I wanted to be like, 
Oh yeah, I got some flowers. Did you send them? But why was you trying to be petty though? Because I wanted to. I want people to hurt. I feel like you knew who didn't send them, and I was right. No, you weren't. Rapper Bay had sent them. Which one? The only one. The only one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, Lord. I forgot that wasn't his nickname. You're going to jail. I'm sorry. Okay, wait. Oh, you is right. He did send them. But see, that's the thing. If you would have said something, then you would have found out. You fuck around. The more you fuck around, the more you're going to find out. out. You would have told on yourself. I, I mean, at the time, I was kind of like, because it was between him. Because what if you would have said something? What? And then he was like, what you mean did I send them? Who else are you fucking with? Because for you to not know who sent them, that means multiple people know your address and can send some shit to you. And they and do. been there, maybe. Well, no, that, this is my, you know, old spot. Yeah, so changed. I feel like I was, I feel like I gave you good you advice. You did give me good advice, but it wasn't giving what I needed it to give. So that's why whenever... You were just being a Leo. I like drama. I Let's know. bring the action. Yes, that's what you want. You want me to be dramatic. You want me to be yes. like, oh yeah, bitch, stir the pie, stir it stir up. Stir it up. It's a gumbo, baby. <laughs> and you wasn't giving that, so I had to hang up. Boop, bye, She boop. hung up in my face, y'all. I was so fucking bad. Talk to you tomorrow. Okay, let's get into this next topic. Me bitch. and you be having some drama. This crazy. Over stupid, the stupid. Over the dumbest <laughs> shit. We, if people knew what we fought about, they would be like, you We bitches. fight over the dumbest fucking shit. <laughs> Okay. I was like, bitch, did you hang up on me? Andy. I called you back. Then I'll do it again. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> do it again. <laughs> Oh, my I mean, God. Like this okay, get into the LS copy. Express. Mm. You got to bring straight to my coochie. Okay. I brought in the first topic. It's your turn. Okay. So, topic two. We're going to talk about relationship PTSD. Now, on a serious note, y'all, I know we've been playing, but this I'm is... about to play some... about these two. You about to play? I'm not playing about <laughs> this. It's time to get serious. It's time to get served. It's Shit, them got served. funky. All right. <laughs> Okay, let's no. come on. Okay, so relationship PTSD is a real thing. Let me just say that. Because a lot of people think that your past issues with the person that you've been dating, um, they feel like, okay, this is a fresh start. I'm good. I'm okay. No. Like, I honestly feel like my last relationship that I was in last year traumatized the fuck out of me. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, I dealt with this man for a long time, but the shit he put me through this past year was just kind of like, what the fuck? And so my issue is, <clears throat> when I'm going out and dating new people and trying to meet new people, I just, I'm completely like shut off because I feel like if I let my guard down, I'm gonna get hurt. But to me, being the Leo that I am, I enjoy dating with my guard down. It's fun for me. Like, I like to go all in, fuck it. If I get my heart broken, it'll fix, and I'm going to go do it again. But now I feel like he's kind of messed that up for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't date. You did used to be that person. And I'm not anymore. And it, honestly, it hurts my feelings because I want to feel that way again. Like, Why? Because it's fun. Like, I want to be like... Like, I know I've been joking this episode, like, oh, my man, my man, my man, but I really have not let my guard down like I should mm -hmm. and I want to because this shit fucked me up. But dating like that is fun for me personally. So I have relationship PTSD. Like, I feel like if I call, like, literally, this is what happened the other day. I texted somebody and they didn't respond in, like, 20 minutes. And, you know, y'all know what I did, as crazy as it sounds? Y'all know what I did? I went to my notes, and I drafted this, this text that I was going to send him. And I was like, you know what? Our communication has been off. We can cut this off and end it. I had fun. Let's go our separate ways. Because I was so used to dealing with that with my past situation. Mm -hmm. And literally, like, he had texted me. He was like, hey, babe, what you doing? Blah, blah. And he was, like, in such a good mood. He was like, Before oh. Before you sent it. Yeah, before I, because I was going to send it at midnight. That's what I was decided. I was like, I'm going to give him like a couple of hours. I'm going to send it at midnight. Mm -hmm. I'm an overthinker, but like I You're said, a child, dude. I've been ruined. <laughs> okay. I have been ruined. Let me, let me read the definition of relationship. relationship. Okay, PTSD. go ahead, read it. 
It's a trauma-based, a trauma-related disorder linked to an abusive or toxic relationship with a spouse or significant other. Mm -hmm. Relationship PTSD differs from other types of PTSD in terms of symptoms and signs. Mm. Relationship PTSD can be difficult to live with, but treatments and support are available. Do you need <laughs> support? I need, tr I need like, <laughs> shock therapy, a lobotomy. What we talked about the other week? <laughs> Drilling this motherfucking brain, Baby, bitch. don't be trying to use that term because you was trying to play me. No, I wasn't. When I looked, you didn't believe me until I looked that shit up. I need a lobotomy, you need a lobotomy. I have, P I have relationship PTSD, too, though. From? From? No, I'm asking, like, from when in your lifetime? Like, I'm not... A few years ago. Okay, okay. So what happened in that relationship? Yeah, I feel like I was, like... Dating somebody that was really controlling mm -hmm. and manipulative yeah. and narcissistic and mm. stuff. And, you know, it was kind of, like, hard to walk away from the situation because of all of the stuff that they were doing for me at the time. And I needed some of those things, Now, too. when you say doing for you, are you talking about, like, physically, emotionally, like, materialistically? Um, I would say... I would say physically and materially. Okay. For sure. Okay. But not even materialistically. It was, like, things that I really needed them to do financially. Okay, that okay, Because okay. this was, like, before the show Popped started off. taking off and stuff. Okay. So, yeah, so... But I just feel like the things I had to deal with to get what I was getting, it was just, like, emotionally draining. Mm. And I feel like you know this stuff, mm -hmm. obviously. Like, it was, like, a very emotionally draining time in my life. Yeah. It was. I feel like I was not even myself. You weren't. And I feel like I don't... I feel like still to this day, like, I'm I'm more back to myself, but I'm still not as, like, carefree as I used to be when mm. it comes to dating. Because I feel like I really always been, like, a carefree-ass bitch. Like, mm. whatever I want to do in I'm that gonna moment... I'm going to do it, yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I feel like after that, I have just been such an overthinker when it comes to oh relationships. Oh, my God. See, that's how I am. Yeah. So you was laughing at me about the text, but I was overthinking because... I was dealing with a man who felt made me feel like every time I expressed myself, yeah. I was nagging. I was getting on his nerves. Mm -hmm. And it's like just because somebody tells you how they feel, you need to receive that and try to be and try to understand because if you love this person and that's your partner, receive that and understand why they feel that way. Mm -hmm. You know? And I saw something from um when I saw something, I had a talk with my therapist and she was saying a lot of times when you're dealing with someone, the reason that the conversation goes left is because you're saying, well, you did this, you did this. And this is even with friendships. Like, when you're trying to express to somebody, like, like say you hurt my feelings, I'll be like, well, Drea, you said that you don't like the way this and that, and that, you know, but I need to be like, well, Drea, when you said this X, Y, Z, it made me feel, I felt like, because when you say you, 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 that's automatically gonna put somebody on the defense. You know what I'm saying? So I think a lot of times we also, I always say this, it's not about what you say, it's how you say it. Right. So one thing I'm learning is how to properly communicate, but also not blaming myself. Well, and then too, I was going to say with me, the reason that I feel like I have like relationship PTSD is because anytime, because I felt like that situation was so um, manipulative and controlling, mm -hmm. anytime a nigga give me a sign, he could like just suggest one little thing and I'd be like, you trying to control me? <gasps> He'd be like, you want to go to see Little Mermaid? Hold on, nigga. I don't even what like if Sebastian. I go, what if I want to go see Creed? <laughs> <laughs> No, it's definitely given that. I can agree with that. No, that's me. Yeah, yeah. I, I know me. I'm agreeing with you. Yes, I'm really like that. Like, mm. it's like, it could be the... You could suggest the smallest thing, like, oh... Hold on, please. Cream my donut. <laughs> Sorry. And Thad, I, I know I probably should have asked this prior to us <laughs> recording, but can we order food? Oh, Lord have mercy. Go I'm ahead. Hungry. Go ahead with your statement, bitch. I'm hungry. It's okay. this cream donut. Got me lifted. No, we changed the <laughs> name of the cream. But keep going, keep going. But no, for real, it could be like, oh, you know, French chips look good on you, but I think you should try, like, red nails. Yeah. You trying to control me? Mm. Why? Right. Why you want me to wear red? Right. I don't even like red. Will you ever see me wear red? Right. I just feel like I'm real combative. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that makes sense, though. So how do you think we can heal ourselves? Because like I said... Therapy. That's why we going. Yes. And I think I also have, if we're also being fair, I know this 
was specifically pertaining to um, your significant other and your spouse. But I feel like I also have, like, relationship PTSD from, like... Friendships. No, well, yeah, but I wouldn't even think about them. Oh. I was thinking about fam- <laughs> Wait. I was thinking about family shit. Mm, okay. Like I feel like you can have relationship PTSD too from like family trauma mm-hmm. and trauma bonds and yeah. stuff with like family members and stuff. And so I just feel like a lot of the time, I feel like I've said this before on the show. Um, I feel like because of the relationship that I have, like with my biological mom, mm-hmm. it, like, kind of translates in over to my dating life. Mm. How so, though? I don't trust people. I'm always... Bitch, I'm always... I'm a skeptic. Yeah. I don't trust nobody. But you know that about me. I mean, I do, but I I'm trying to feel people. like... And I, but I feel like you shouldn't go into relationships feeling that way. I, the reason I don't trust people is because I don't trust her. Mm. But this is okay. But I can't trust now you. we get into trust, right? But I feel like, but how could you not trust her? Because like you told people before, like she was young, she didn't know what to do. So why do you feel like you can't trust her? Like, cause she didn't do anything. She was just but doing what the she adult. Did. She was just doing what the adults in the situation had told her. To yeah, do. but but she but but she was an adolescent for way less time of my life than she's been an adult. Like, she's been an adult most of my life. Right, but at the same time, you still have your parents that raised you, so she couldn't go and do anything. I just think being... I, and I really would love to get somebody on a show, like, I don't know, maybe, like, a therapist or... Well, you got me for now. Well, no, so no, no, no. What I was about to say is I would <laughs> love to get a therapist maybe on the show who would... <laughs> Bro, who is uh, adopted. Like, mm. I would really like to get somebody else on the show that's adopted because I feel like it's a difficult conversation to have and I think most people don't really understand, like, how your mind works. Right, Being right. in that type of situation. Like, I feel like it really kind of fuck you up mm-hmm. a little bit. So it's like, to you, she ain't do nothing. To me, she did a lot of fuck right, shit. Right, right, right. I mean, because I know the things, it's, like, as an to adult. To these days. Yeah, to... <laughs> and you talk about I play too much. Because I was going to say, I'm, I've been adopted by these streets. <laughs> I've been outside for a minute now. Thanks. So I know how it is. Yeah. I ain't supposed to be here, nigga. Yeah. But I'm here. You're not supposed to be where? Here, nigga. I was adopted what by this street, this street mentality. It's in my mind. So with that being said, I'm glad you said that, though. I feel like I've told you this off camera before, though. Yeah, you have, because, but I want the the ma- the people oh, yeah. to hear it. So, yes, yeah, so I feel like, yeah, when they come in, I, do you ever feel like you self-sabotage relationships? Oh, I'm about to... I always feel like this. I'm going to fuck this shit up. I'm going to fuck this shit up. Ooh, I, I always feel like that. So, it'd be so funny to me whenever, like, people always be asking us why we single and shit. Because I be fucking I up. I be fucking up. I be fucking up, too. Yeah. But see, the thing about me, the difference between me and you... The difference between me and you... Is that I will never love her. I will never trust her. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> okay, dog. Rich, hold me quiet. Ty, we got something. you really put up in here today? Okay, go ahead. The difference I feel between like you me. a little park salt or something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what we need. A, we need a Percocet rim. Oh, my God. <laughs> Pop the perks, nigga. Now these people going to think we do drugs. Why would you say that? Man, and we are drug free. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I have never had a Percocet rim, but that's actually a good idea. And why would I call it perk salt? <laughs> that's that's a good idea. I mean, but anyways, the difference between me and you is what? Oh, the difference between me and you though is that I be fucking shit up, but I'ma bounce for you can bounce on me. Oh yeah, I'ma stay and I'ma. You gonna stay? I'ma baby, baby, please. I'm a, I... <laughs> I love begging for my man. Why you had to say that? Because that's what that man said to you. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I would dip on a nigga before he could dip on me, though. Yeah. No, okay. And I don't know if that's top. I, I feel like that's no, kind of I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. It's one man that I have been like, oh, my gosh. And I think, you know, you know who that is. Like, cause the man I've been dealing with with the longest. I be bouncing on niggas, too. <laughs> But I, I'll cry. I was about to say, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> These people was about to think you used to be fucking white. <laughs> Bro, they always think we say anything that we... Who is that's who she fucking? <laughs> Bitch. I don't know. 
I wanted to say that. But no, I feel the same way. That, but I honestly sometimes I feel like due to this is the, another relationship. Due PT to others. No, another oh. relationship PTSD thing is I feel like um, I be looking for characteristics of my ex and other people. So if they don't have that, I be like, uh, mm -mm, I'm going back home, bitch. I go back home. You do one thing, I'm going back home. But your ex got terrible characteristics. Terrible, so and I love it there because we're horrible together. I had that nigga in the headlock. Say sorry, ho ass nigga. He ain't know what to do. <laughs> but anyways, I, I have never fought a nigga. Oh, I fight. I got shook before though. No, I'm a fight. But that's because I threw now, a glass at a nigga head. Well, see, you get serious. We weren't serious. Bitch, having a nigga in a headlock not serious? Huh? And I do it again. But we weren't really trying I to threw hurt it, but each I other. missed on purpose. I was just trying to scare oh, okay. him. I threw it. Now I, I knew did. it was gonna hit over there. But I wanted you to know no. next time I ain't gonna miss. Right, right, right. But now I will say this. Now we're not condoning violence. So. Bro, because that's what he sounds <laughs> like. <laughs> I'm not condoning that. But what I'm saying is, I feel like my last I relationship cannot. was very toxic. I have another one. It was very toxic. So my but my problem is I got comfortable in that toxic situation. So I would be looking for that in my new situations. Because I felt like, oh, you not acting like XYZ, you not blowing my phone up, then that means you don't care about me. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case. You know what I'm saying? So, What's yeah. What's the case? What's the, the case is a man can care about you, but he doesn't have to blow up your phone. He doesn't have to pop up on you. He doesn't have to act crazy. He don't have to curse you out. He can literally talk to you calmly. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not even a person that really raises my voice like that and gets mad. No, I'm serious. When I'm mad, I don't. When you ask all the men I've dealt with in my life, besides him, I yells at that nigga. I've never yelled at any other man. They be like, Lex, raise her voice? What? That's what you ain't care, though. I've only had a few. I've only had two niggas. PTSD. I did care. Just I've because had, I'm yelling. I've only had two niggas. I knew I was, uh -oh. I knew I was down bad I when I chased. The, I creamed on the couch. Javier. <laughs> <laughs> Keep just up. because I'm, but see, that's the PTSD. Just because I'm Lexus, yelling. I don't know if y'all realize Lex is like a kid. If you laugh, she gonna do it again. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm here, keep laughing. That's why you keep saying that shit, bitch. Anyways, that's, that's I knew toxic. I was, because just because I'm yelling does not mean I care. I knew I was down bad. I knew I was down bad when I ran down on this nigga in Miami. That was the most down bad time of my life. Yeah, you was down bad. I was, I because that ain't even me. I am too player you for that. You too player. I'm too player for that type of shit. But that nigga took me all the way out That's of why I said it. that nigga, I lost all my player points. Every other nigga, they be like, man, But Lex I feel like that's why I got PTSD. Like, mm -hmm. I just don't be trusting niggas. Like, I just be like, what you want? Yeah. What you and doing? I'ma, and I'ma, like, stop fucking with you before you can like hurt me or like put me back in. Now see, that's my problem. Position. I stay like, I like a nigga will hurt me one time, but I won't say nothing. Mm. Cause I think if I say something, you're gonna think I'm annoying, I'm nagging, no, I'm instead of me expressing you. myself. Exactly, that's my PTSD. And then the second time you fuck me up or you hurt me, I'll be like, hey, I'm cool on you. And so you thinking I don't care, but I'm whole time I'm like at home, like, ah, oh, damn. And I'm crying and I'm sad. So, that's my problem now because it's like, don't get me wrong, like, yeah, I've got my feelings hurts, but one, I don't express myself. And two, like, I enjoy dating with my guard down. And I'm just not doing that anymore. And that I ain't really never been me. Yeah, but I really want to get back to that. But I feel like I that. didn't used to. See, I feel like I never dated with my guard down. I just ain't never gave a fuck. Yeah. That's been always me. Mm -hmm. Like, I just be having fun. Yeah. Like, I never take, it's nobody I've ever dated that I took serious. Mm hmm. Yeah, okay. Except for maybe, like, currently. Yeah. But I've never taken nobody serious. Yeah, I can agree. Cause I, I Even can... that person that I'm talking about with the PTSD, that I got PTSD from them, I feel like I got PTSD from them because I let my guard down a little bit. But you didn't take it serious. But like, I... You didn't think y'all was going to be, like, no, together. No, and... I didn't want to be with that nigga. Yeah. I never wanted to be with that nigga to the point that you used to be like, you don't want to be with... You used to say, you used to be like, Drea, bro. No, you do not even like this nigga for real. And that's, okay, and let's talk about that real quick before we move on. What? Women, and I, we don't even got to talk about it. Ladies, please listen up. Y'all be heartbroken over a man. Y'all be in y'all feelings. It be your ego. 
you don't even like this nigga. You're just mad because he's not acting like what you think you deserve. You, you trying to prove a point to yourself. Yeah, as a that woman. You, can't, you don't yeah. even like this man. You freaking out over a man you don't even like. You just trying to prove a point that you that bitch or you that girl. You yeah. don't like this nigga. So once he starts acting like you want him to like, guess what you finna do? Move around? Because you just wanted to prove a point. And once we realize that, you'll just, I don't give a fuck. Let me tell you something. It's some niggas that be like, yeah, I left Lex. Cool, I don't care <laughs> if that's what you want to think. Cool, I'll give you that because I don't care. I learned, now I'm learning how to let go of my ego. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times yeah. it was just like, I was trying to prove a point. Like, oh, you messing with this girl or, oh, you not acting right with me. Let me go hard. And then I go hard and then he finally start acting right. And then I'm like, damn, my bad. Cause and I'm love, over here. And love hurt and ego hurt is two different things. You got to learn a different facts. When you get hurt by somebody Speak that you, on it. when you get hurt by somebody that you really love, that shit really is like debilitating. When you get hurt not by- Not debilitating. Hey. Like you got a lobotomy. <laughs> You never gonna stop using the lobotomy now you know the I definition. I just learned a big word and I'm just happy. When you get hurt by somebody that you love, that shit is debilitating. When it show ego, you could tell, like, I used to be enraged. I used to be very upset, very angry. But not because I was really heartbroken, because, like, was like how the ego. fuck you trying to play on my toes? Right. Thank you. And that's be why you said You? Play me? <laughs> you play me? Be fucking for real. But that's how I feel. That's how I know I love my friends. Because, yeah. like, Killer got mad at me. One time, a few weeks, and I was just like, oh my God, I'm about to lose my fucking mind if my friend don't answer the phone. Mm. Like, you know, me and you, we got a little fight at the beginning of the year, and I was like, oh my God, oh my God. I'd be so sad. I was awfully. Like, my sister would be and mad. And y'all probably seen it in the episodes, because I used to be like, bro, I ain't got time. Now, see, now you just admit it, now they'll be like, gotcha, bitch. I don't give a fuck. You like, y'all don't have fucking problems. That's I, one thing I hate about people. Right. We're on a show. So sometimes things gonna play What's gonna out. What's gonna happen if I eat this coffee bean? <laughs> okay. I'm rolling on a bean, mm -hmm. I guess. I don't know. Okay, go ahead. However, people just... One thing that frustrates me sometimes about this show is, like, we have to live our lives in front of people. Mm -hmm. So then they be judging us. Like, bitch, you be having... You and your friend ain't talking over some dumb shit because she owe you $3. Now, why am I... I didn't say you. Oh. You ain't never owed me three dollars. One thing I'll say about Lick, she was always, if she asked for it, it was like three hundred. <laughs> I never, asked for so small. It was never three dollars. I'm gonna ask for it all, bitch. Cause I think that's crazy when people ask for like three dollars, twenty dollars. Mm, yeah. Cause I'm you gonna need I don't another think that's 20 crazy. tomorrow. I know, but I, I told you, we said so this I'ma before. So I'm gonna ask for a honey. I'm gonna ask for and 20. And I'm not gonna pay you back. I'm gonna ask for a 20 from 10 different people. Nigga, I'm up and I'm stuck because you're not getting that 20. You have that. always said that. Yeah. If I'm gonna ask for money, though, I'm gonna just flat out ask for a lot of money because number one, I know I'm gonna need some more tomorrow. And number two, I know I'm not gonna pay you back. <laughs> 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 I know you're not getting that shit back. Even oh, if I get up, brother. I'm okay, now what you were saying? Finish your thought. Oh, yeah. You I don't forgot. remember. <laughs> <laughs> so let us know about y'all's relationship, PTSD. So now we going to get into the bed. Hey. The bed. Bow. Oh, I remember what I okay. was saying now. Say it first. I just feel like people be like trying to judge us based off of the stuff we say. Yeah. Or like us not getting along all the time. Mm -hmm. I feel like we do a great job of not showing we, let it. Let me tell you something. But. Even still. Because it's real everybody love and real get life, into so. they, Everybody get into it with their friends. And we not going to tell you why we getting into it or why we not talking or why we not right. on good terms because that's not your business. Right. However, everybody gets into it with their friends. Imagine loving somebody and y'all don't fight. That's unrealistic. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. We do way better than a lot of other people that are in business. We don't really get into it, though. No, we really don't. That's what I'm saying. So that's what I'm saying. Other, these other people that have businesses together, friendships, that's one thing I love about Poor Minds because you can really see two black women that really have love for each other and really, this ain't no throwing drinks in each other's face, sitting on here arguing. We're not for the drama. We're for the betterment of black women. Yeah. Whether I don't care what y'all think about this platform. We love each other. Mm -hmm. And we've said that since day one. Three yes, steps. we're not going to get along all the time, but I say this. I don't even get along with my blood sister. 
Literally, I came out the well, womb. Well, we got the same sign. So yeah, like, so if I, my mom and her have the same birthday. My mom was my best friend. We used to argue all the time. That don't mean I didn't love her. Everybody knew my mom was my best friend. So, it's... of course, me and Dre not going to get along every day, but it's, like, literally genuine love there. So that goes back to the point of you saying, it's a difference from your feelings getting hurt from heartbreak versus your ego. Because I know how I feel when my friends hurt my feelings and a man that I love hurt my feelings versus somebody that it's like an ego thing. It's just I like you tried difference. to play with me. Yeah. I'm going to get you back for that. But that's me? the No. Oh. Me. That's I was a, like, please. No. But you know, you always say that about me. That's the tourist Oh, me. Drea, I, don't forget shit. <laughs> Literally, it can be six years ago. Yeah, bitch. You remember that time you liked my ex picture and thought you was hurting me, bitch? And I always get my leak back. Psychopath. Oh. What's up, y'all? This your girl, Lex P, and I have a very special announcement. Well, I already announced it, but I'm gonna let y'all know again. We are going on tour. It's starting in June, y'all. Look, we announcing it extra early so y'all got time to get your tickets. No excuses. We got LA, Philly, Chicago, Atlanta, Houston. Now, listen to me, because I know how y'all get. We are still adding dates. I repeat, we are still adding dates, but if you see your city right now, go ahead and get your tickets. If you don't see your city, don't worry. We still coming, okay? So make sure y'all go to www.poorminds.com and get y'all VIP meet and greets. We on side, poo. Columbus, Ohio. Columbus. Ohio. Columbus, Ohio. Uh -huh. In Palestine. Columbus. It's Columbus. Columbus. Yeah. The, what was it? The yeah. Popeye's Theater? Uh, oh, Palace. I thought it was the Palace Theater and the Popeye's Theater. We going to the <laughs> Palace Theater. Yep. May 21st. Columbus, Not planned. Ohio. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Yeah. Bow Wow yeah. gonna be there. Yeah. And we going to shopping at Eastland Mall. No okay. cap. I'm, I'm going. A little bow wow. You just don't know. Then when you move so fast, hey, I got the flow. I'm gonna make up to my mind. Okay. Uh, I'm not uh, doing this bow wow. Uh, 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 you boys said, Bow Wow gonna pull up for me. Same, you hey, you hey, too. Hey, he gonna pull up for me. All the way. <laughs> Get your tickets, Slim. May 21st. No cap. Ohio. Come on. 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 Ideas, you know what I mean? Yeah, all the way. Get the ticket. Okay, so now <laughs> we gonna get into the bed. Ow. The bed. Bow. The bed. Bow. 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 So, so today. make a song. I was ready to freestyle. Get a little bit of thing. So today we're gonna talk about <laughs> how to get better at sex. Mm -hmm. Sex is a skill. Um, I was listening to this sex therapist and she was talking about how like literally sex is a skill that has to be learned. Just like how you learn to walk and talk, people learn how to play football, they learn how to play. These are skills that you learn. Mm. So and you gotta hone in on your craft. You gotta hone in on your craft. So do you feel like, like for example, we can never be good at football, like ever. Mm. But I could be good at fucking. <laughs> That's not where I was going. Oh. <laughs> not where I was going. I'm saying, like, we'll never be good at football because that's just not our skill. So do you feel like some people will just never be good at sex? Like, it's just a skill that they don't have? Or do you feel like if you just keep going at something, like, you'll eventually get good at it? Like, if you feel like we practice football for, like, four years, ten hours a day, we would get good at it. No. We too old. I feel like you have to cultivate certain talents and... So you're telling me a virgin, she's a, like a man or a woman, they're a virgin at 33. They've never had sex. They can oh, never... Oh, you're not going to be good at Never. Sex. No. Never? You started too late. Started too late. Wow. I'm not, and I'm not advocating for starting early. Because I started. <laughs> Real early. I don't know, I'm though. Saying. I'll say this. Oh, I'm going to get a lot of backlash for this. Uh-oh. I just feel like you got to practice anything to be yeah, good at it. That's true. That's true. And um, if you only ever, like if you a 33-year-old virgin, mm -hmm. not that it's anything wrong with it's that. It's not. Amen. Amen. Okay. Nothing wrong with it's that. It's not. Um, but how you going to be good at it? If you ain't if you, never did it, and then when you do do it, 
You only did it with one. Cause you gonna person. keep going. You gonna keep practicing. Who, but who said you good? Who is the parameter? This one nigga. Um, I mean, maybe y'all break up and you and you've decided to have more partners, or maybe Unless, this person is okay and they they want to teach you. I feel but like, still, who gonna tell you you good at it? You only did it with this one person, so I guess you good. To, to that, that person. person. I'm not going to lie. You See, get what I'm saying? Yeah, I get what you're saying, but I disagree. Like, what's the parameter of being good? Because if you had one partner, who can who can vouch for that? Right. So, I disagree. I feel like... I don't really care about being good at sex, though. Why? Like, for your partner? No, you don't care? Um. Well, I was going to say, I don't really care if, like... People say that. Yeah. I don't care if people say yeah. that. Yeah. I care for me. As or far people as, think that. Yeah, I don't care. Like, like I, I always has, I always say this on the show. It's probably a nigga out there to be like, Lex talking all that shit, that pussy trash. I don't give a fuck. And see, I, I always say, I always backdoor and say, I disagree with you. What? No nigga is saying my pussy trash. I don't, but I see, I don't care. Why did it's but it's not about caring. Why do you think niggas be saying your pussy trash? I don't honestly, to be real, do I really <laughs> feel that way? Hell no. <laughs> Garfield is the gripper. <laughs> okay. But I feel like everybody in the room laughing because everybody's seen it. But seen what? The, pri the prince. Oh. Anyways, I feel like this though. I do feel like any skill can be learned. I honestly feel that. I feel like if I went on the football field for 10 Hours or even five hours a day at every 33. Day, at 33, I'm going to, I'm not going to be fucking Tom Brady, but I'm a <laughs> nigga, I'm gonna throw a touchdown or two. The fuck? When you practice a skill, you're gonna get good at it. Like, I really feel what that do you way. Mean, what do you feel like makes one good at sex? Now, this is what I, now, this is where I differ at when it comes to like getting good at sex because I feel like. One thing about me, I like about sex with my sex is that I'm very open-minded. So if I really like you, I'm going to be willing to try anything with you. And um, that's not necessarily a skill, but that's just something you can't teach. So some people are open-minded, some people are not. But as far as like little stuff like that you just know, a virgin is not going to know it's important to arch your back while you're getting hit from the back. A virgin not going to know, yeah, deep throat that dick because it's going to get that good thick spit and it's going to make it feel real good. They don't know that. But if you sucking dick seven days a week, you're going to learn that. It's a skill. So I feel like if you are actively trying to get better at it, you're going to learn how to get better mm -hmm. at it. No? No? I feel like hoes, it's a lot of hoes that have been fucking for a long time. And they, they still don't know the archer. still trash. Well, that's different. We're not talking about... Because you know what? Yo, sex game Listen, listen, trash. listen, listen, listen. No, because I have talked to a, uh, one of my old guy friends. We're not I friends like no more. I feel like you gotta really like... I feel like you gotta really like somebody to, like, learn how to have good sex. Oh, yeah. That, but this is a man that I talked to. He was a, a very wealthy man. I wasn't fucking him, but he was... He used to buy pussy all the time. And he could say... He was like, I can tell the difference between somebody who's good at sex... As somebody who has good pussy. Because you can have sex with somebody who's good at sex, but their pussy not that great. You still go nut because they're good at having sex, but they pussy not good. And then you can have somebody who got the greatest pussy, but they're not good at sex. You see what I'm saying? So we're talking about getting better at sex, the act. Mm. You can get better at... You can't if do you nothing about your pussy. Your pussy gonna feel good or it's not. You can't do nothing about that. But I feel like if you... Do things and pre if you start having sex at 33 years old and you have sex a lot with a partner, you're gonna get good at it. You're gonna start to learn what men like. Honestly, a man, a man likes. And then if you have sex with another man, you're gonna learn what that man likes. And then you can kind of be like, okay, niggas usually like this. Niggas usually like their balls played with. It's very rare you come across a nigga who don't like his little balls tickled. Like that. They That's like what I'm saying. So if you have sex with three guys and you don't put it in your notes that, hey, niggas like they balls play with. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That's a skill that you can learn. I feel like you can learn to be better at sex. Yes. See? But... The coochie is the coochie, though. We're not talking about how good the coochie feels. That's that's what... 
I feel like, though, if your coochie is not good, then niggas is not going to say you good at sex. But they will, though. I don't. You can have a girl who can toss, turn, do tricks, and the pussy, it's like, it's all right. But they not about to be like, yeah, I'll fuck that bitch. And she was doing tricks, but that pussy was trash. Like, they going to be like, the pussy all right, but yeah, she know what she doing. She know what she doing. I don't know. We not never in room. You know what I'm always very interested to find out? I wonder what kind of conversations niggas really have when bitches ain't around. Because I feel like that's what this show is. Yeah. This is conversations bitches have when niggas ain't around. Yeah, we putting y'all on too much tea. I mean, niggas do be around, but we just be acting like they not here. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) But I really do wonder, because even with me, I've always been a person who've had, like, a lot of male friends. Mm-hmm. Like, I've always been cool with a lot of niggas' platonic friendships. Right. I, I ain't fucked them. Mm-hmm. We don't have a romantic relationship. None of that shit. These just my partners. Right. And I feel like because I'm that type of girl, niggas talk about a lot of shit around me that they probably wouldn't typically talk about around other of. women. Mm-hmm. But I still know you ain't all the way keeping you it ain't because I'm still a girl. Right. So I wonder what the fuck niggas be saying when we really ain't around. Sometimes I think they say shit just to appease us because I disagree with that shit. I'm sorry. I don't give a fuck how many tricks a nigga turn and if your dick is trash your dick is trash but men are different though they keep falling out you keep falling out yeah niggas are different though with sex what i'm gonna do with it you either got good if it, maybe that is i, I don't know bro, you're right you're right because i feel like you either got good dick or you don't yes yes absolutely mm, but honestly you know what i realized too that I clip that many, we had that how went, many tricks you turned in that two minutes don't mean nothing because why you always nothing in two minutes but listen though yeah but that's different because remember that clip that we had where we was like oh whenever you eat pussy you're supposed to finger her i didn't realize like that's what we like oh that clip got like four hundred thousand likes. the women Y'all in the comments me. no but the women in the comments were like don't finger me don't touch me but they were talking about how men's hands be nasty i don't sleep Ty, with men Ty is over there getting <laughs> outraged <laughs> She said, what? Yes, but the women were talking about, oh, yeah, because you don't know where a nigga hands them been. If you don't know where a nigga hands them been, you don't know and where you let him in your pussy? So that's what was blowing me about the comments. So I say all that to say, different women like different things. But I do feel like dick is different because... Mm-mm. It is a little different. Why? Because, like, I like a, a girthy... You know, I like a little girth, and you can't do nothing about that. But that's what make dick good to you. I feel like you got what make dick good to you, just like niggas got what make pussy good to them. I feel like it's just dependent on the person. It's circumstantial. But you know what? Let me say one nigga might like one nigga might like a squirter. Mm. One nigga might like a creamer. He loves that nigga, waterfall. One nigga might be girthy, so to him, your pussy a little loose. But it's tight because it's girthy. <laughs> I really had something to say and I almost said it, but we're going to talk what about... You almost said it? <laughs> oh, my God. I can't even what? say it. I'm not going to say it on air. One nigga might have a little last dick. He might think you loose. But your dick little. Yeah, your dick is small, <laughs> nigga. Small little dick ass nigga. You, you know you be fucking a big dick and by damn, this pussy tight. You be like, whoop. <laughs> okay. All right, Buki. I'm just saying, Buki. <laughs> and that's the point that I'm making. Okay. Like, it be different strokes for, di- for different literally, folks. Yeah. for different folks. You're right. Um, but I do feel like men are stuck in their ways with sex. I feel like a lot of women don't orgasm with sex, so that's why we are willing to be open-minded and try different things. Niggas know exactly what makes them nuts, so they're going to do that regardless. Mm. With... Kind of every woman, you know what I'm saying? So that's why I said with men, it's a little different. You either got good dick or you don't to me. So Mm -hmm. if you like fucking this type of way, because this is the way that makes you nut, but I don't like that, I'm going to have sex with you and and think, okay, he got whack dick. Mm -hmm. But you may have sex with the next girl, and she may be like, oh, this is some fire dick. Like, because the way you come makes her come. You know what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? So men don't really veer out. Women, we're always trying to find out how to come. Men already know what makes oh, them yeah. nut. We're always trying to discover new things. How can I come? When I tell you, like, I recently was tied up for the first time. 
I was recently tied up for, and things got too wild. But I didn't even know that I liked that shit. I didn't know. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I feel like I'm still discovering things that make me orgasm. Men know what make them come. They pretty much know. They got really mad at us in Why? the comments. About what? When we was talking about squirting. Oh, yeah. I'm a squirter, hon. Shout out, shout out to my Me grandma. Me too. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> pew, pew, pew. It was World War Three in that no, motherfucker. No, it's really my granny fault. I'm about out the gats, nigga. Mm. Mm -mm. Pull Period. Out the gats. So let us black, know, black. do y'all think sex is a skill that you can get better at and that you can learn? Okay, bitch. We gonna move on to the bop. Hey, the bop. Ow, the bop. Bow, bow, uh, bow, bow, bow. I don't like how you don't sing with me no more, but it's okay. I don't sing it, <laughs> yeah. but I'm a little drunk. This yeah. is, I think it's a mixture of, for the next episode, I can't do espresso too. Mm. It's too much. I, am I up or am I down? Mm. What's I'm going bold. on? I'm face down, What's ass going? up. <laughs> oh, you said up and down. Okay. I just go ahead. <laughs> So my bop of the week, I actually made this my bop of the week a very long time ago. I feel like this was my bop of the week when we're, whenever we were in the studio with Moran. But mm. I listened to this song again the other day, and I was like, wow, this is an amazing song. And now that we have a bigger audience, I really want y'all to get hip to her. I hope I'm saying her name right. Her name is Tanriel. Ooh, I hope I'm saying that right. She has a song called Nothing Without You. I think it's Tanriel. Tanriel? 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 I don't know. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Girl, please forget. But you spell it T-A-N-E-R-E-L-L-E. -E -L -L -E. First of all, she's beautiful as hell. Like, beautiful, gorgeous girl. I love to look at the beautiful girls that can sing, mm -hmm. just like me. Um, she has a song called Nothing Without You. And this song came out probably like three years ago. And it's just... I told y'all I love R&B, like, let's be in love. And she's just basically talking about how she's nothing without her nigga. She's nothing without her man. Mm -hmm. And it's just beautifully written. Her voice is so soft, but she has a deep voice. I love a deep voice, girl. And, yeah, that's my bop of the week. Um, it's fire. Y'all, please go listen to it. And I actually like the fact that she was talking about how she got, like, 82 million streams on Spotify or something but they don't really pay out because, like, people have been talking about I streaming. Like, yeah, she was like, I still got to sell these T-shirts. I still got to, you know, make sure I sell tickets just to make sure, you know, I'm making money. Because, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of times people see artists that have all these streams and that are selling out these shows and they think they're making a lot of money. But, but when I tell y'all these streaming services are fucked up, I mean, we know it just from, you know, the, 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 the platform and stuff. So, yeah, mm -hmm. shout out to her. Y'all make sure y'all go support, stream her music. Period. What you got, little Drea? Rip me out the plastic. I've been acting brand new. Beat Lotto. Yeah. I love Lotto. Me too. And I love this song. Okay. Put it on the flow. Put it on the flow. Put it on the flow. It say floor, but be, I know how she said it. Put it on flow. the flow. She didn't say it like that. Put she it on said the flow. And I'm from Texas. We say flow too. Mm -hmm. You know what I like about this? She switched up her flow on it though. It was. You think so? Yeah, she was really like, it sound, I hate to say this because I know people say that they're dating. I'm, I don't know. I don't care if they're dating or not, but it was given like a 21 Savage type of flow with it and I really liked it. But either way, this girl can really fucking rap and mm -hmm. I want people to stop playing hard top. Y'all may not like her for whatever reason, but the girl can rap. Give her I just things. feel like people be joining the hate train. The hate train is so childish. This girl can rap. Everybody captioned this whole week been ripping me out the plastic. I've been acting brand new. Bitch, it ain't that much plastic in the world. And they mad. And y'all not acting brand new. Sure not, because you still fucking that old nigga. Can't relate, because I'm not. If you bring, I need, we need a counter for how many times Blake's done brought this nigga up. My old one or my new one? Hey! <laughs> the new one. You ain't never brought your old one up this many times. Mm. Ever. It's that ever, cream. Ever. It's that cream donut. All right. So that's our vibes yeah. of the week. Shout out I Big love Lotto. Big Lotto. Shout out to Big Lotto. And I want to say that she did an amazing job at Coachella, too. Like, I feel like she's taking her craft seriously and really trying to become a performer. Everybody is rapping now. Everybody's, you know, in the spotlight. Shout out to Lotto for taking her craft seriously. Not, and it shows in her performances I agree. and her music. Mm -hmm. So, amen. So mm -hmm. now it's time to get into the item of the week. What the, you, ooh, I love me some Riri, mm -hmm. Rihanna. Find 
have some Fenty Beauty. Okay. Fenty Beauty products. I do not wear makeup for real. Okay. No more. I, it, which is crazy because I really used to be a makeup girl. Me, we both did. No, we did. I actually wanted to learn. Fun fact. I wanted to learn how to do my makeup after I became cool with Lex because she would always do her own makeup all the time. And whenever I used to want to get my makeup done when we met, when we worked at the club, I would always have to pay to get a makeup artist to do it. Mm-hmm. That shit, $150, it lasts one day. I said, you know what? I'm about to get my bitch ass on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So I learned how to do my own makeup. And for a minute, I was obsessed with doing makeup. Mm-hmm. But now, I barely it? wear it. Now, what is but it? But I love... It's, um, it's a skin... It's like a skin glow. All over glow enhancer. Yes. Ease droplets. Yes. Look at this. Look okay. at this. Oh, so it's sheer. It's sheer and it's shimmery. So if you don't want to wear any makeup, especially for the summertime, for the springtime, especially for the summer and the spring. You probably can't see because all that ice. Mm -hmm. That is blinding. Okay, I like this. But yes, so it's good for the summer. Look And look, it stays like glowy too. Mm -hmm. It doesn't dry down matte. And I love it. So... Whenever I want to do like a more full, I've never been a full coverage girl for yeah, real. Me neither. But whenever I want to do something a little more full coverage, I mix this with my Dior show. Okay. And then when I just want like kind of a glass skin look and I'm trying to do the no makeup effortless look. look, I put a little bit of this on all over my face, a little bronzer, a little concealer. And some highlighter. I like that. And I'll be ready to go. The do And look. I love it. And it does not dry your skin out. It's not sticky. Yeah, it's not super sticky. It's. I mean, it, it has a little tack. What is it called? A little, little tack. But not much. Not but much. not much. Yeah. And I just love this product. I think okay. this is a really great product. It comes in various skin tone ranges. Anybody can find one that's good for their skin, skin tone. And it's bronze jasper because I know they're going to ask. That's Period. What it's called, Bronze Jasper. It is. I'm on it. So, yeah, so this is my item of the week. And again, it's already been a little while. It done dried down even a little more, but it's still, like, look at the difference. Wow. You Can you notice the difference? <gasps> wow. Mm-hmm. I feel like you try- All right, now it's time for our favorite segment Dad, of the can week. Can I please get. <laughs> My Pour your question. heart out. If you want to get your question answered on the show, make sure you email us at askpoorminds at gmail.com. If you're a Patreon member, make sure you put that in the subject line. Make sure y'all sign up for our Patreon. Thank you. We drop fire episodes and we be talking about all the hot topics. And um, we're doing a little a little one-two for the Patreon for tour. So uh, who got question? Oh, you got That's question crazy. number one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so question number one. Let's go, little Drea. Mm. Hey, Lex and Drea, I'm 23 and I'm from Indianapolis. Add a tour date, by the way, please. Really, this is for both of you and it's not a question. I was just scrolling on Instagram and I seen Lex's IG post to her mom for her birthday and it touched me. I know you have experienced the loss of a parent as well, Drea, and the reason I'm writing is because I lost my mom three years ago and coincidentally... You guys are going through and navigating the loss has really motivated me to push forward. And it's super hard being a young adult without a mom. But seeing y'all be great really encourages me to do better. I love y'all, and I've been watching since the first time y'all was on 85 South. Y'all are my sisters. Also, because of y'all, as soon as my business money starts to pop, I will be on better help. I've been wanting to so bad. Period. I think the thing about grief, though, people got to realize you have to go through stages of grief. Waves. Like, yes. Because, like, at first, you're going to... I don't say at first. Like, for me, I was confused. Then I was mad. Then I was mad at myself. Like, you're going to go through all these different emotions. And then it's like, at one point, I got mad at myself for crying all the time. And it's like, once I realized, like, it's okay to cry because you're never going to stop crying. Mm -hmm. And literally, like, I was talking to my aunt, my mom's sister, and um, my grandmother died, like, 
literally like years ago and she still be crying over it. and she's like in her 50s you know what i'm saying my mom is like this who my grandma yeah so i feel like one thing that you have to know is that like you're gonna you're gonna feel better of course but the tears never stop and that's okay so i think we need to everybody like if you're grieving somebody you need to understand that there's stages of grief and that you're gonna go through it but never be mad at yourself for feeling how you feel mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and know that you're not alone it's a natural part of life like mm -hmm. everybody has been through it or if they haven't been through it yet they gonna go through it because mm -hmm. we can't escape it one thing the only thing that is inevitable about life we all gonna die mm -hmm. sorry hopefully they don't sound depressing but for real though yeah okay um so, question number two. Hi, Alexandrea. My name is Anaya. I was in a relationship for a year. It started off as friends, then fuck buddies. I had sex with a guy before him, and on the same day after that, and on the same day after that fuck, he became my boyfriend. We have been on and off the entire year. He was 23 and I was 18 when I met him. He has put me through the ringer, leaving me and coming back. Now I know love bombing me. He didn't have a lot of money. We split everything. I even gave him my old phone, which now I found out he was texting women at our job and then was sending nudes to him. He denied it and continued to lie when I showed him the evidence and he laughed in my face. He gave me BV twice and a yeast infection and blamed it on me. I was tricking so much on him, it was crazy. One of the girls he fucked came to my house and told me the truth. He kept lying to the end. And I told him, fuck him and to die, and he blocked me. Now I want to pull up to that job and two-piece him. Girl, you should have left when he gave you BV. The first time. If y'all continue to fuck a nigga after he gave you something, you asking for it, bitch. You're asking for it. And I don't mean to shame, because sometimes a nigga give you something the first time and it's horrible. He, God literally gave you a pebble and was like, okay, this is not the one. And you steady want to do it until he got to throw that boulder on your ass and that shit really going to hurt. How many times are you going to see that you done gave me 16 reasons why to not fuck with this nigga and you didn't give me one why you should? He broke, his dick stank, he got to use your old phone, the girl sent the news to your old phone. And then she pulled up. Girl, I wish a bitch would, like a kitchen cabinet. Mm. Yeah, girl. <laughs> you, you don't Pull even up to my house? It's crazy. You don't need Why advice. You? She don't need advice. You know what to do. Don't even pull up to his job. Let that situation go. It's toxic. Are you going to be having a relationship PTSD and you're going to be fucked up? Let that shit go. You a little down bad. Yeah, you down extreme Not a bad. little. You a like. Because if it, he gave you BV twice and a yeasty, and a yeasty, you was baking bread? You was over there baking that brioche with the French <laughs> toast? Girl, girl, you need to leave me the fuck alone. No, I'm trying to preach to her so she'll know. <laughs> Brioche with the French toast. Brioche with the French toast is wild. Okay? That's giving panini. Exactly. you press. You walking around smelling like a bakery in this bitch? Yeah, I don't like it. Girl, move on. That don't smell like a bakery. Mm, mm, mm. So, yeah, Anaya, move on. Uh, so, if you want your question answered on the show, make sure you email us at askpoorminds at gmail.com. Do we have a voicemail today? Yes. So, we got a voicemail. Make sure, now, y'all, listen, the voicemail is not for advice. You know, you just get things off your chest. Please leave it to, like, 45, 30 seconds. Not nothing too long, okay? So, uh, we're going to put the number below. Make sure y'all call us and just get some things off your chest. All right, what we got today, Thad? Hello, Drea and Lex. Thank you both hey. for the amazing content. Much love to you and your team for always being on point with the uploads. The show looks and sounds amazing. Thank you, Ty, for the wonderful drinks. I enjoy tipping the Kratom like you do every time. Prayers for continued success. Blessings from your down south brethren in New Orleans, Louisiana. And also, quick side note, let us beautiful water signs live. I'm a cancer. And my loving and existence is much appreciated on this earth. Thank you all. You have a nice one. Mm. 
I thought he was going to say he was from New York. He kind of sound like a New York nigga. He did sound like a New York nigga. But he said New Orleans. Oh, he said New Orleans? Yeah. Okay. Well, shout out to you, Buki. Hey, boo. Thank you for the love. Uh, make sure uh, y'all get y'all tour tickets. Make sure y'all go to poorminds.com. Uh, what else you got to add, Lil Dre? Anything else? That's it. You know, poorminds.com. Make sure that you get your tour tickets. I got some t-shirts that's mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. Um, and my lip gloss. MuseBeautyCollection.com And the t-shirts on there too I got it right this time Alright y'all It's time for karaoke Let's do this shit What's up, y'all? It's your girl, XP. And it's your girl, Dre Nicole. And we are here to talk to y'all about GoodDaySense.com. Yes, I love me a good candle. And Good Day Sense candles smell so good. And they're soy-based candles. My fave. So there's Delicious. nothing better than getting your house super clean, uh-huh. mopping, sweeping, all that good stuff, and lighting a candle. And let me tell you, my favorite scent is Black Love. I like to manifest that in the air because that's what I want. Yeah. And so, Oh, and what? it's vanilla. You, I feel like you can never go wrong with the vanilla candle. I mean, it's fall time. That's the kind of sense we need. So also, you can use code P-O-U-R, that's POUR, and get 25% off of your order. So go to gooddaysense.com and get your candle and use our discount code and have your house smelling good. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Lex P. And it's your girl, Dre and Nicole. And I got some really good news for y'all. Yes, period, y'all. We are about to revamp our whole Patreon. Yes. We got so much new shit coming soon for y'all. Like, we about to be doing challenges. We about to be doing blogs. Mm-hmm. We really about to be dropping a lot of exclusive content for y'all. So if one episode a week is not enough, y'all about to get some more content on Patreon. Yes, y'all be saying, oh, make the episodes longer. I need twice a week. Well, this is your opportunity to see us twice a week. And also, you kind of get, you're going to get a look into our lives Mm -hmm. and know us on a personal level. Mm -hmm. So make sure y'all sign up at patreon.com backslash poor mind sign up today there's different tiers so if you want audio only you can just listen if you want video and audio we have that too and also we have a top top tier where you get exclusive access to merch shows all that good mm-hmm. stuff so go to patreon.com backslash poor minds and sign up today oh you being serious today First of all, let me say, you can't accuse me of all the things you know that you are guilty of. And I see that it is easy for you you to blame blame everything on me. If that's the case, I should go have my fun and do Do all all the things things you say I do. Boy, I can't continue continue to do this from you. I might as well have. Cheated on you as much as you accuse me of cheating. I might as well have yeah. to you yeah. as much as you accuse me of lying. Yeah. I might as well have gone into the club as much as you accuse me of clubbing. I might as well have yeah. threw away my, my love. As much as you accuse me, I should have cheated. Say when I was out with somebody. Okay, hold on. (laughs) You lost me. (laughs) First of all, we didn't even got to finish this shit because fuck that. I should have cheated. Fuck you niggas that be blaming shit on me because I'm going to cheat anyway. Per. Might as well. That's what Keisha said. (laughs) 